Yeah. Hello, everybody out there in Facebook and YouTube land. It is Merit with Master of One Coaching, and I'm here with some amazing guests. And I'm going to let people catch up just a little bit because we are a little bit early. Yeah. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves to everybody? Sure. So I'm Julie. I'm one of the co-founders of One Epic Place, along with my dynamic, awesome partner, Nicole. And I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for asking us to join you. Oh, so much pleasure. Um, yeah, I'm Nicole, Julie's half, other half of, uh, I guess, the dynamic duo. And um, yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about how you guys got together and got started in this. Well, so about first of all, tell us about One Epic Place and then how it all got pulled together. Um, sure. Well, One Epic Place is a co-working community in New Paltz. Um, and we started um, not even really knowing what co-working was. Julie put an ad out in um, on Facebook looking for um, someone to rent an office with. And um, I answered the ad and we um, kind of really met for the first time. And within like hours, just kind of it off and we were sitting on the floor of a bare <laughs> with like neon green uh, paint. It was hideous. <laughs> and we're like, yes, we're gonna do this. And, <laughs> and we didn't know what this was, by the way. We just that we got into co-working completely by accident. We just went into it to share an office together because we were both coaching. So yeah, sorry, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we had no idea what we were doing and we were just like something feels right and we just um started talking about being entrepreneurs and being alone and what our struggles were and um trying to figure out how to navigate these crazy waters and um needing space you know the logistics of Mm -hmm. an office and trying to figure out how to afford that when you're trying to build your business. And um, yeah, and then just needing support and community and someone to brainstorm and, and talk to and um, slowly seeing so many people around us needing the same things. And mm -hmm. right, how can we help you? How can we collaborate and, and not be alone and, and afford this together? And um, that's how it started. And I, I also I had owned several businesses prior and, you know, just kind of typical business owner worked myself to the bone 24 seven and it took over my life and I refused to let that happen again. Um, so behind everything Nicole and I did was this sense of like, it's got to be fun. You know, it's got to and it's got to fit us and fit our personality and um, and not stress us out. So, right. So so that was, you know, it was really what we wanted to do for ourselves became this community. And it's just been amazing. That's awesome. Really amazing. And it sounds like it was really synergistic from the start. Totally. Yeah. It's like we had known each other for decades. It was it's crazy. It's still crazy. <laughs> Past lives, perhaps. Maybe. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about the um, what One Epic does? Um, sure. Do you want me to go? Sure. OK. <laughs> so um, I mean, of course, we offer space, right? That's like the main thing that we're known for. Um, we have all types of space. Our whole motto this whole time has been to listen to people and just listen to what they need, what they're missing, you know, where do they need support? So we started off with offering um, space of all kinds, right? Private offices by the hour, um, which led into full-time and virtual offices. And now we offer so many amazing things, but it's all because we've just listened to um, what people needed. Uh, and in addition to the space, it was really about community and support. You know, when you run your own business, Sometimes it can feel like you're on an island and you're doing everything yourself. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Nicole, especially really like one of her passions is creating community. Um, so that really became kind of like the most important thing to us was to make sure that the Epic members feel supported and feel like they're part of something and that they have somebody to go to when they're really struggling or, you know, trying to figure out how to prioritize what to do next or the, all the ideas that they have. Um, 
or just give them that extra little push or cheerleading when they need it. So, yeah. so that's really been like the staple of what we do is, is the community. Um, and then of course we offer business coaching cause that's what we do. Um, and Nicole, do you want to share anything else that I might've missed? Just expand a little on the listening in the different kinds of space. Cause I think it is something that, um, you know, yes, we're a co-working community, but I think we're unique in that, you know, yes, we have offices and conference conference rooms, but um, like one of our first members was an audio engineer and he was like, I need a piano and I need soundboarding and I need this. And we're like, all right, well, let's figure that out. How can we make this work? And then the next person was um, an acupuncturist and she was like, I need a massage table and I need to burn myself and I need, you know, a filter. And I, so we were like, all right, well, let's figure it out. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we have, treatment rooms and we have a music room and we have an event space. So we do have all kinds of spaces. So when we say spaces of all kinds, we really mean that. <laughs> <laughs> and if we don't have it, we're willing to try to figure it out. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And it's true that your space is so, it's so, it's professional and also very comfortable and it feels very, I want to say homey, but not in a sense of like, just feels it feels like uh yeah like you're at home like i mean we feel at home there right it's not like it's in your house but it's like it feels very comfortable and very like relaxed i guess is the word i'm looking for yeah and it's um, funny because we thought that that may be um a hindrance in the beginning um and i remember when um hudson valley um tech meetup group would come and um use the space for their meetups sometimes and um you know, they would come in the epic room, which has had a nice carpet and a fireplace and a hearth and, you know, nice comfy furniture and, and very homey. And when we moved into the loft, <clears throat> in the very beginning, it was pretty sterile. It was just like a big open room with, you know, wood floors and blank walls. And we thought like, oh, they're going to, you know, they're a tech group. They're going to, you know, be excited that we have this new, more industrial type space. And after their meeting there, they were like, can you go back to the other room? It was <laughs> <laughs> so people do like cozy, you know, it's just, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you have to work, why work in a sterile environment, you know, be in something that feels good. It's interesting too, right? I mean, we could get kind of down in the rabbit hole of like how home and work life have merged over the last year in COVID. And so a lot of us are feeling that that um, synergy, I'm going to use the word synergy between home life and work life. I oftentimes when I'm on these lives, like I'll have my kids like yelling in the background or stuff. It's like, it's just so there's a, a nice um, combination, collaboration of the homey feel and feeling belonging, right? You're feeling you're at home and you're belonging when you walk into your spaces there, which I love. Mm -hmm. I want to bring up just a comment from Lucia who says that she loves the island metaphor. And Lucia is an amazing uh, photographer and media professional here in the Hudson Valley and definitely loves um, one epic place and uh, also did my website. So if y'all want to check that out, because she's amazing, she and her sister. Um, and I think they're going to be coming on in the next couple months too, but she's a awesome. member of our community here and is a big supporter of you guys. I know. So yes. Um, Hi, Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a picture of her and her, her little boy Hudson there, which is an awesome. So picture. cute. All right. So you mentioned about community and what you're, that's really kind of the primary or one of the primary goals of One Epic. Mm -hmm. Why is that such a passion point for you all? Um, I think, I think it's because it's how we grew up. I mean, both we, we found out like after we had been together for a year or two, maybe um, we actually found out our fathers knew each other. We didn't know that before they had both oh seen the <laughs> Um, but we actually have pictures of photos of them in our office that Nicole surprised me with on our open house when we moved into this building. Um, they were both huge, uh, you know, leaders and builders in the community. And I think we just both grew up that way. And it, it, it was so important to us to support local businesses and being, and we were both already so involved in the local communities. Um, and we really try to like, you know, live by what they taught us. I mean, 
and and so like even down like we really taught what do we walk the talk like the, the lamp you see behind me right there <laughs> even our lamps are made by a local um light making company they have our logo on them and like we try you know we really everything we do is about supporting local community it's like a little taste of behind her of what what it looks like in their spaces nicole yeah. did you want to add to that um yeah, I think everything Julie said, and I think just having been also on the other side of it, you know, growing up in community and, and knowing what that feels like and the difference it can make. Um, and then I think for both of us starting our businesses without that and knowing something was missing. And then when we found that in each other and started to grow it, you know, like with each moment or phase, just realizing holy crap yes yes this is it work this is what's this is what makes the difference and how instrumental it is yeah yeah well and that kind of takes us to this social impact piece because a lot of the, the work that i'd like to highlight here is number one leadership and number two leadership in social impact work and i would definitely categorize categorize you all in that because of your community leadership so and I know that um, you both have been involved in a number of initiatives and in supporting social change locally and beyond. So can you talk to us a little bit more about, about that kind of, that aspect of the work? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, from, um, from a young, very young age, I kind of took on different roles. Again, I really credit it to my father because, um, you know, he was always so involved in the community. Um, I was actually on the chamber board in my tw early 20s um, before I moved to the city. And then when I came back, um, you know, I'm, I'm now on the, the chamber uh, board of directors uh, again, which is amazing. The New Paltz Chamber is awesome. I can't say enough good things about them. Um, and then, you know, I've been involved in different committees to help uh, economic development, but like smart, you know, I mean, New Paltz is so special and we have a lot of people who are really passionate and care about what comes here and what we, you know, um, promote in our community. So that's always been really important to me. Um, I was involved with the um, New York rising when uh, Hurricane Irene happened, you know, just helping um, the community kind of like figure out how do we move forward and how do we, you know, prevent you know, economic disaster, whatever in the future, if there if there was going to be another event like that. So, um, yeah, just always being involved, I think, is so important. I mean, it's one thing to sit around a table and have conversations with friends about, oh, this needs to be done and that needs to change. And but unless you, you know, jump in and do something right, somebody's got to jump in and, and do something. So otherwise, it's never going to happen. So I don't know. I was just kind of like raised that way. <laughs> and I just uh, for, for the um, for the people who are watching us who are not in the area, when we say the city, we mean New York, because we are somewhat That's of a better area. community for New York City here. We have a lot of people commute and have a lot of back and forth relationship with that area. So just yeah. to clarify. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I lived in Brooklyn before Brooklyn was popular. Right. I did too. I did too. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I was in um, uh, Cobble Hill, but I was actually now under the rubble of the Barclay Center, what my apartment was. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. And I wanted to bring up another comment here from Sheila, who is our amazing president of the uh, board of um, or chair of the board of the New Paltz Chamber, and she says that Julie and Nicole are amazing leaders in our community, and I learn so much from them every day, as do we all. So thank you so much, Sheila, for chiming in there. Back at you, Sheila. <laughs> and uh, so, Nicole, what did you have to add to that? Um, yeah, I think similar to Julie in that my father was a very big role model in that aspect. You know, he was a big conservationist and had very far reaching impact on <clears throat> the community and giving back from an environmental standpoint. Um, and just always admiring that and wanting to somehow someday when I grew up, you know, be able to interact too, not knowing how the hell that was gonna happen. But, um, um, and then meeting Julia was such an inspiration to me, um, just everything that she does and strives to do. And I feel like a lot of times I'm riding her coattails in that. And um, yeah. um, 
Yeah, I think just really listening and learning from all of these incredible leaders around me, um, Mary, you and, and Sheila and Bill and so many strong women in our community. And I think together, listening and how can we collaborate, um, you know, we're doing it together. I don't think any one of us can really, you know, it's a collaborative effort for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you both are, are moms of some amazing children, right? Oh, yeah. We're not so much, not so much children anymore. And yeah. I know that uh, just from knowing you that that our role as parents and raising conscious and conscientious children mm -hmm. is a really important part of the work that you do every day in terms of community and in terms of um, understanding the needs that and the desires and the responsibilities that parents have as we build businesses, right? And bringing them as part of the community, just like yours, talk about your dads did that for you. My parents did that for me too. I remember going to chamber events in my hometown when I was a little kid and, uh, you know, walking around my glass of apple juice when everybody else was drinking wine and having cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, having our kids and our families be part of the you know the home atmosphere of work right and have it how how connected that is uh so that's something that i really appreciate about the work that you all do is that it really is about the whole person right and and our relationships that we have and all the different roles and hats we wear okay awesome so let's talk about some wisdom that you can drop for our audience here if there's one thing that you could each share that would be a great takeaway for them today what would that be for you all and we'll start with julie and then go to nicole Okay. Um, I would say it's just what you said a second ago. It's about being a whole person. Hmm. Like, I, I think if I could like kind of distill it down into a sentence, it's like, be the same person you are in your business that you are in your heart. I mean, that's it. Be yourself. Um, you know, I grew up and went, entered the workforce in the 80s, right? When women were trying to be men. <laughs> so, you know, the big shoulder pads and, you know, you. Oh, it's just, yeah. And, and somewhere along the line, I just realized like, okay, this is not for me. And I, I just can't do it. If I, if I can't wear jeans and a t-shirt most days and, and just be myself, I don't want to do it. Um, and Nicole is also very much that way. I think it's just, you know, built into her too. And and so just be yourself. And, and if you need help with that, because some people have spent so long not being themselves or trying to fit into some mold. Um, yeah, let's talk. We need to break that down. <laughs> so, so yeah, be yourself. That would be like my biggest wisdom. Sure. Yeah, I, I love that. And, and some people might feel like a, themselves in a power suit, right? And that's great yeah, too. And that's and that, great. I love that. Exactly. There isn't one way to run a business, right? There are right. as many ways to run a business as there are people in the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that's something that people really struggle with. I see that in leadership too. It's like, well, if I'm going to be a leader of some sort, I have to have a certain persona. I have to have charisma. I have to wear wear my hair a certain way or dress a certain way or have a, even a job title that calls me that. Absolutely. And it'll save you so much frustration and exhaustion and stress. And yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. How about yeah. You? And you see, Nicole and I, like we are constantly making fun of ourselves and being goofy. And, you know, sometimes like we'll have like little moments where it's like, ah, oh, do you think, you know, maybe we should be more professional? And then we're like, nah, we just need to be ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Nicole? Um, yeah, before I do mine, I just want to um, add on to that a little bit because um, Julie is so good at reminding us of that all the time. And that is definitely, I think, the epic legacy. You know, Julie talks a lot about, you know, epic as a noun, like being an epic means doing business your way because of who you are not despite it. So um, I just am just in awe of the fact that she's like a, a dog with a bone. She does not let that go. And it, yeah, she yeah. makes sure we never forget it. So, yeah. um, so mine is a two-parter, um, and it kind of feeds into that. I think it's every single day, strive to find your passion, mm -hmm. find that spark, whatever it is, and just keep, you know, fueling the, um, fanning the flames, you know, and just 
not just in your in your business, but like Julie said, it's it's who you are in your heart, and and that's who you are in your business. And um, not it's easy to lose sight of that sometimes when we're just in mode, mm -hmm. and it's like you know the day to day grind. Um, but always tap into that 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 spark. And then the second part of that is um, find your tribe that will help you grow that spark into this raging fire. You know, we just need to find who we are and turn our passion into purpose. And then we can do that so much more effectively when we have um, support, a mentor, um, a coach, a business partner. Oh. I have, I'm so lucky. I'm going to get choked up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, we we pinch ourselves every day. It's that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, if you can find your Julie, um or your Nicole. Because <laughs> it can make all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I it's amazing how to watch you kind of volley back and forth between the two of you too, because you're always like supporting each other, you're always complimenting each other, you're always giving each other props and and you know. T -t talking about each other's strengths and it's just a beautiful partnership to be around because it's so um symbiotic and it's really uh it i don't like the word contagious because it sounds like there's a disease <laughs> but it, um, it has a ripple effect i'll say it that way right it's like it it's uh it spreads that energy and, it, and it's really in every corner of the buildings that you run and every event that you all put together and every email that you put together it's you know, because you have such heart and such purpose and such um, a cohesive team, you're such a cohesive team that everything that you do comes through with that. And it's so inspiring and it's just wonderful to be around. So thank you for coming together and thank you for doing what you do. It's awesome. You know? I'm merit if I can add to that, because I think it's, if this is important, that's, thank you for that. And that is all true. Um, I think we're each other's biggest fan. Um, but yesterday, <clears throat> if you were a fly on the wall, you would also see the tough love part. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are each other's biggest cheerleaders and we're always supporting and encouraging each other, but we also um, keep each Call other each other on our stuff. And that's great. We need that, yeah. right? When you have a when you have a mutual respect and trust. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's so important to have that. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't really respect and trust each other because you didn't have the full spectrum. Of yeah. Them. Yeah. I mean, one of our core values is raw communication and, and we live by that and it's not always easy. I mean, having this partnership is amazing and wonderful, but it takes work just like a marriage or, or running a business. I mean, it takes work and, and we work at it every day. And, and part of that is just being super, super honest with each other at all times. So. Renee Brown talks about um, rumbling. I and love that. Like, yes. Open to rumble. Just get get into the arena and you got to be yeah. able to be open and honest and talk about stuff, right? It's just yeah. always to move, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Lucia has another comment for us. She says, <laughs> <laughs> right, do epic. <laughs> Not just be epic, but do epic. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, in our last couple of minutes here, if you'd like to tell us a little bit more about some of the new initiatives that you've come up with um, in the last little bit, uh, go ahead and you know, talked about community membership. And I know there's something else you wanted to mention, too. Um, yeah, I mean, we definitely our core um, business model is based on membership because we encourage the community aspect. But, you know, through the pandemic, we've had to get more supportive for what people are going through. And so new things that we have are um, virtual office packages, which allows you to have um, a professional address. So you can come get your mail. And so um, business office without all of the overhead. So we have that as new. And we also have um, a point bundle where you can buy points instead of a long-term commitment, you can use them as you um, need them, which is more affordable than a guest rate. And we also have a community member. So we're happy to chat about all of those things anytime. We're just happy to chat. I mean, just <laughs> come have a tour, a cup of tea, um, or hop on a, a virtual uh, call with us anytime. I, I must say, so when I was um, coming regularly to the space before COVID, and I was using that as office space and you guys had the unicorn bites. I miss the unicorn bites. 
<laughs> a lot of people do. People used to buy them in bulk, so that's so <laughs> delicious. <laughs> they are really tasty. <laughs> that would be like my breakfast would come in and be like, oh, I'm going to just have this. Yeah. yeah. But they're yeah. super healthy and like good energy, keep you going. So, yeah. Yeah, and that it's was a lot of fun. I chips in the morning when I'm home because I miss the air core bites. <laughs> we should, maybe we should make them and like have them available for pickup out on the back porch. Oh, for yeah, that'd be amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Another idea. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we wrap up today? I, I would say the only thing is, you know, like we said before, the way that we've um, grown Epic is just by listening to what people need. And, and if there is something that you're struggling with or something you need or a type of space that, you know, even if it's only a couple hours a week, like come talk to us, uh, you know, we're always happy to like figure stuff out and, and help it, help it happen for someone. So well, and you mentioned you've been doing this six years now. Is that right? Six years, yeah. yeah. It has grown and grown and grown. You take you take on more spaces. You also do um, like a sort of more um, regular rental of offices now to mm -hmm. uh, curate those spaces. And so there really has been just beyond the one building. There has been a whole community of spaces that you've developed and yeah. and are managing and running and. Um, it's such an amazing thing to see the growth there. And it's all because of the heart plus the professionalism that you all put in and the team that you guys present and the openness that you, um, and the love that you, you share with your members, with members like me. Uh, and I certainly benefited from it. And that's why I'm a community member, even though I don't see you in person. <laughs> I want to be part of the love. So, um, so I really appreciate everything you do. Thank you so much for, you. for being here today. Thank you so much for for being the leaders that you are, for uh, your commitment to our community and commitment to helping businesses grow and thrive uh, with the heart at the center. And how can people reach out to you? Where, where do they find you? Um, we're pretty easy. It's oneepicplace.com, one epic place, Facebook, Instagram, and it's spelled out, um, O-N-E, not the number. Um, and you can call us, you can stop by. We're 122 Main Street, we're the beautiful brick building on the hill across from uh, Lemongrass. Um, our door is almost always open. And um, did I miss any? I, I, yeah, I have info at oneepicplace.com. Um, and then, yeah, everything's on our website. And there's, um, there's great information there. Uh, and you can always stop by and see us. Obviously, we have all safety protocols in place for COVID social distancing, but we still we still love a good in-person chat. Um, we have a beautiful back lawn when it's not freezing outside <laughs> that we can, we can meet on. So, yeah. Awesome. And for those of you who aren't in the area, I would also recommend, and I'm sure they'd be open, I'm just kind of say this without talking to you about it first, but I'm sure it, like if people had other like questions about how do I build a space like this? Like what can I do in my area? It sounds mm -hmm. like it is such an incredible resource for our area. You know, would that be okay if people reached out to you and said, hey, I'd love to get yeah. your thoughts on how to build something like that? Absolutely. Um, I, th I thought you might be okay. With it. Absolutely. I mean, we're, you know, we're just trying to change the economy. That's all. So, <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, so we're happy to share what we know. I mean, if we can create this in other communities, um, you know, that's going to benefit that community. I, the, yeah. It's better for everybody. So, so, and so, just specifically, when you say change the economy, can you speak for like two sentences on what you mean by that? And that's a big one, but yes, I mean having like a heart-centered business and and collaborating and being part of a community, um, and just you know doing business from the heart and and from your values, which is not always easy. Um, it takes a lot of work. Uh, but I think it's something that we have to do for the for the world. Yeah, I, I'm a hundred percent there with you. I'm I'm working it on a different angle, and I and I completely one hundred percent with you. And just so that you know, our last little comment here, not little, our last comment here is from Jonathan Howard, who often joins us on these lives. Thank you so much, Jonathan. He says he loves your Instagram work. <laughs> he says beautiful work, but I think he meant beautiful. <laughs> um, but Jonathan is our Thank social media guru who. Uh, who comes often and, and hangs out here and has taught me a lot about social media. So he's got, you've got his endorsement, which is a big one. <laughs> wow. That's great. Thank you. 
All right. Well, thank you so much again, Nicole and Julie, for joining us here today on Leadership Life Fridays. I'm really grateful for you to being here. I'm grateful for your our relationship. And <laughs> Jonathan says, yes, I'm, he met beautiful. <laughs> um, and uh, and I'm just really, I feel very lucky and blessed to, to know you and have you as part of my life and, and be in this community with you. So thank you. And um, I will be posting this on Instagram TV and Facebook and LinkedIn in the near future for the replay and uh, on the edited version. And um, hopefully that you will hear more from them in the future, but go check them out. They're amazing. And uh, I highly recommend you either reaching out to them if you're local or even if you're not local, uh, finding out how you can do something like one epic place in your area. Have a great day, everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Merit. Thank you, Merit. Bye.